September is National Sickle Cell Awareness Month. This is a time where we can talk about it and spread awareness for others to understand how this disease works and how it affects lives. Sickle cell disease is an inherited genetic disorder that affects the body's red blood cells. Red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin, which allows our red blood cells to carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of our body to supply our major organs with oxygen. The form of hemoglobin that makes this possible is hemoglobin A which is found in most adults. Sickle cell disease affects the production of hemoglobin at a genetic level, where the sickle cells actually carry a certain form of hemoglobin called hemoglobin S, which instead will cause red cells to form abnormally rigid and have this sickle shape to it. So now the sickle cells are not able to properly hold oxygen to carry that throughout the rest of our body. Uh, this causes a major lack of oxygen in the body and that can lead to a lot of sudden severe pain that may require frequent visits to the hospital for treatment. Sickle cell disease can also lead to a higher risk for serious complications such as stroke, which is a major risk of this disorder because as the sickle cells attempt to travel throughout the body, they have a higher chance of getting stuck and causing clogs in the arteries or even stopping blood flow completely. The disease is most commonly found in African Americans. Other ethnic groups may also have a risk, such as Middle Eastern, Indian, Asian, and Mediterranean backgrounds. Let's talk about some facts that you can also find on the National Institute of Health website. So the first fact is that this is the most commonly inherited blood disorder in the United States. The second fact is that in the United States, there is about 100,000 people currently living with sickle cell disease. The third fact is that one out of every 365 African-American babies is born with sickle cell disease. And our last fact that took me by surprise when I first learned it was that one in 13 African-American babies are born with sickle cell trait. So that's a lot of people in, that have the ability to pass this gene onto their children in the future. If you're interested in finding more information, please look at the links that I posted in the description box below. I work in healthcare as a medical lab scientist, and as far as sickle cell patients go, it's my role to analyze the blood samples that are collected, and I perform the blood test. Usually it's like complete blood counts and other routine lab testing, as well as sickle solubility testing which is a test to screen for sickle cell disease by detecting the presence of hemoglobin S. I may also perform blood type evaluations and antibody workups. It's also my job to prepare compatible blood products if they need it for transfusion therapy. One interesting part of my job is that I analyze the red blood cells under the microscope. So I thought it'd be pretty cool for us to look at some microscopy slides of peripheral blood and talk about red blood cell morphology as well. I'm just gonna show you a picture of a normal blood smear, <laughs> and then we are gonna talk about a case study. So on a normal blood smear, these are cells that we would call normal sites, which are red blood cells that have this circular shape along with what we call central pallor in the middle that takes up about a third of the center of the cell. So these are relatively normal red blood cells. So for our case study, we will evaluate red blood cells under the microscope. I don't have any complete blood count results, but in the laboratory, we are trained to compare what we see under the microscope to the automated results from the analyzer. So we will describe these red blood cells and I will refer to this chart and I'll define terms as needed. So please take a look at this chart explaining what abnormal findings we could see in sickle cell patients. The point of this case study is just to talk about some red blood cell morphologies related to sickle cell anemia. So we stained our slide and we will review it under the microscope to report our findings for the patient. Tyson is our patient. He is a 22 year old African American male with a history of sickle cell disease. He presents to our emergency department with shortness of breath, dizziness, and a sensation of pain. He rated his pain as an eight out of 10 that started in his back and feet yesterday, and he needs our help. So the doctor orders a complete blood count. Part of that test is to perform a manual red cell morphology. Let's take a peek into the microscope and see what we find for our patient Tyson. So the first abnormal finding I see under the microscope is poikilocytosis. Poik is shape in Latin. Cyte is the root word for cell, and ptosis means a lot. So these red cells have a lot of variation in shape. So let's talk about the shapes that we see in this field. Drepanocytes are what we call sickle cells. They are not round, they are elongated, and they have pointy ends that lack central pallor and are more like a football shape or like a crescent moon shape. Target cells are bullseyes and have a little spot of red in the middle with area of pallor around it and could be another sign of anemia. Our next finding is anisocytosis. The cells have a variation in size. One is normal sites, which are red cells that have a normal size. Microcytes are these 
red blood cells that are small in size. So um, if we look back at our chart, we see that the RDW is increased. So that can correlate to what we are seeing here with the variation in sizes. The next thing I see is hypochromia. And this just means that the cells lack the normal reddish pigment. The red cells have a large central pallor and they look pale compared to the normal cells. For now, we will associate this with low hemoglobin on our chart. Um, something else that I see in this field, I don't know if it's going to come through blurry on the phone, but um, polychromasia, where cells have an abnormal color, they're more of a purple or blue and not the usual red pigment. One possible reason to correlate this to is that the body is needing more red blood cells at the moment. So the bone marrow works really hard to supply the body with more red blood cells, but the cells are not able to reach maturity in such a short time. So we see them being this large purpley type of cell. Another type of cell that we could see for sickle cell patients are nucleated red blood cells. These are red blood cells that contain a nucleus which means that they are also immature red blood cells. This can be a sign that the body is really needing red blood cells so bad that they are being produced outside of the bone marrow or at a very, very fast rate. It could also be a sign of stress in the body, anemia, and even hypoxia, which basically could mean that there is an overall lack of oxygen if these are present. Just a possibility. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was inclusions. These are findings of substances inside of the red blood cells. In this case, on our slide, we see how jolly bodies. I went around and found a few examples uh, to show you that they're present, but these are the random dark dots that you see in the individual red blood cells. They are the leftover DNA remnants from the nucleus that was within the red blood cells at some point. This could indicate that there is something wrong with the spleen maybe, because normally the spleen would be responsible for removing these inclusions and it would not be present circulating throughout the body in the bloodstream. So there could be another issue going on. And there's more abnormal findings that I see in this slide, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple <laughs> and not go too technical into describing the red cell morphologies. I just thought this was an interesting case study to do just because in the laboratory, we provide results for a range of patients dealing with so many different ailments. But for certain things like sickle cell disease, we can clearly see them under the microscope. And that's just one example of abnormal findings that we can see and correlate to possible disease states in the patient. So from here, I would document all the findings that I had in the form of a complete blood count. So this panel includes an automated blood count and a manual blood count. And that is where I would perform my testing under the microscope. This includes a white blood cell count, a red blood cell morphology, and a platelet estimate. So all of these tests will be combined into one lab report for a complete blood count. And I would release these results to the patient's charts so that the doctor can then diagnose the patient and begin their treatment plan. So I hope you found this case study interesting, maybe even informative. I just wanted to bring awareness to this genetic disorder as well as highlight the medical laboratory profession and how we are able to help sickle cell patients from behind the scenes. So if you found this video helpful, please like and comment down below as well as subscribe to my channel for more future content. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>